audio festivalis Banguoja. Naktinės perklausos, tinklalaidžių įrašai ir pokalbiai su kurieis. Rupiučio 16, 26 dienomis Vilniuje. Daugiau informacijos banguoja.lt. Organizatorius Nepatagus Kinas. Before the war, I would go out into the pine forest with a sleeping bag in the back of my car and a fishing rod, simple fishing rod. And I would use a fishing rod to cast my simple wire antennas high up into the tallest pine trees, almost into the sky. The most beautiful antennas I ever made in the forest are inspired by spider webs. They look like giant webs of silk and threads strung through the treetops. Strangers can't believe that I have such a big fishing pole and no fish at all. <laughs> And when I come back to the city, people often ask me, and where you fish? <laughs> Sometimes my friends, yeah, my family, like it to ask me every time, where is my fish? But I wasn't out there to catch fish. I was looking to catch distant radio waves. It will be better people thinking you are a fisherman than that you are a spy. <laughs> it is a big difference. So sometimes I even have to catch a fish <laughs> to not attract attention to me. But then I like to put it back into the water because I love fish, <laughs> but I not like to kill them. They are so beautiful. <laughs> I prefer to, to catch radio waves. And when I turn on my radio and start sending out my call sign, I become a woodpecker, tapping out messages in Morse code. My web of fishing line antennas hung in the trees allows me to make contact with other radio amateurs from all over the world. Over time, we get to know each other. Familiar call sign appears on the air. We have conversations in Morse code from treetop to treetop. It's a magic, truly magic. Now I am sitting here in my apartment in the center of Kyiv, in the center of war and explosions and missiles. Again, we have no electricity here. Now most of the city is in the dark. I never went to shelters. No radios in shelters and no antennas. You can't hear anything on the ground. You are like a blind man, and it is very difficult for me. I prefer to stay in my apartment close to my radios. Another empty band. I can't hear any station at all. Hmm, strange. Nothing. One week signal on uh, My name is uh, Volodymyr Gurtovy. 
a lot for short and my call sign is United Sierra 7 Italy Gulf Norway. I used to play with radio and make my antennas just for fun but when the war began the radio became my lifeline. First day of Russian invasion, uh, before my family left Kyiv, my wife and I agreed to communicate with each other by radio. Uh, we decided to use a ham radio. I have to use my Morse key, I think. <laughs> For a second, second, yes. I have too many radios here and just one key, my favorite key. We can't imagine what will be there, here, if we lost our internet connection or phone connection. If she lost connection with me, I will transmit my call sign. And uh, I will try. Oh, you can hear. If I transmit my call sign using Morse code, it is enough to understand that uh, I am alive and able to transmit. Morse code is very slow, but you can say a lot with a little. Sometimes you can say more with a few dots and dashes. It can say more than many words. <laughs> First explosions were so hard and so close that you can feel it touch your skin. When we woke up at 5 o'clock on the 24th of February, we feel it. Me and my wife and my two children woke up all together on one second and we say, uh, do you hear it? Do you feel it? What's going on? It was so... Sudden. Russian President Vladimir Putin has launched a major military operation against Ukraine. On national television, Mr. Putin urged... I had a very bad feeling. I think it was about one week before invasion. Uh, so we were prepared to leave Kyiv, but we weren't ready for missiles. But we stay calm. Оголошена повітряна тривога. Вімкнені сирени. I decided to stay in Kyiv. My wife was against that idea. I understand her. It was very hard to say to her to bring kids and go away. And we discussed this situation all morning, but then uh, all happened in five minutes. And uh, she left just with two suitcases and two children. It was a very hard decision to us, uh, but they have to do it because we have the same situation in Donbass in 2014 and we know what war looks like. So we decided that they will go to Poland. I stayed behind here in Kyiv in our small fifth floor apartment in central Kyiv with uh, only the family hamster and my radios for company. I want to hear someone else. Uh, only noise, only interference. Okay, go another. On the first days there are no cars, no people on the streets at all. So it was silent that city. You can imagine, Kyiv is a capital, it's a very big city, it's a very noisy city, and first day on the war, it was empty. Even birds not singing, and you heard every sound, and everyone 
try to be silent. There's been very loud explosions. You might hear them now, crumps one after the other. They seem to be distant. You have to close your windows, cause shells, missiles and explosions they say you have to close your windows, but when you close your window, it is hard to hear something. And I use one window in my bedroom, I open it, and it was my ability to listen. I sit in on the floor in a hallway and listen a sound from my bedroom window. Yeah, it, it was compromise for, for me to be in the safest place in my apartment and to stay able to hear something. It is very hard to say, but it is true. When you're afraid, you still want to know what's going on. I'm not an army and I'm not fighting, but I can still help support territorial defense in Kyiv. I can help to train people for radio communication. I can help people to repair radio, to create emergency communication network. <laughs> I use my roof to set up my antenna and it works very well, even to listen to uh, Russian pilots or soldiers. Uh, wait a second, I will try to tune it. You can hear tone signal. Once I uh, made a radio antenna from a steel bed springs, you just need to have a tuner because it uh, allows you to tune any metal thing, even a bed frame. And uh, you can't believe it, but that can pick up radio signals up to 2000 kilometers away. Even when it is dark in Kyiv, I can still listen to the sky just uh, using my simple homemade antenna. It sounds like a crazy woodpecker. Hmm, it is interesting. Yeah. Oh, it works. <laughs> it works. I made it from junk. I used uh, little pieces of aluminum pipes and I put it on my balcony. It looks like an old TV aerial, so no one would know it is an antenna. When I made it, I didn't think that it could be so useful during the war. I am listening to the Russian Air Force radio signal. Their communications are unencrypted. I can clearly hear Russian pilots at least 200 kilometers away. I know when they fly and I can warn my friends or my neighbors and tell them to go to the shelter. I live in an old building on the fifth floor, no lift and it takes me several minutes to get to the street. So I just hide behind a thick wall in my apartment, but with my radios. Maybe it's not smart, maybe it's crazy, but I did so and I'm still alive. Sometimes it is hard to open the door without light, but I get used to it. Ось я вдома. І мене зустрічає миша. Миша, виходь. Миша, виходи. When my family left Kyiv, they left me with my son's hamster, миша. Mouse on English. Миша, виходи. Миша. Sometimes I give her cheese and she likes a little piece of toast. So every morning we have breakfast together. She had a bad не забуваю. А ти товстенька. And I never thought how it will be important to have mouse, my little hamster, with me in the middle of the war. 
I think she became a real member of my family when I lost other members of my family. Hello. Hello, привет, как справа? Ничего. They are in Holland now and my children went to school there. Uh, I miss them very, very much, and every day thinking about them. Oh, sounds... uh, when we have internet and electricity, we have uh, call. They often ask me uh, how is mouse, <laughs> how is she doing, and uh, sometimes they ask about hamster before they ask uh, how I am here. <laughs> It is very good to hear that our mouse, she's good, <laughs> she's happy. It uh, distracts from a war and uh, it makes us happy some way. Uh, day after day, night after night, mouse spins in her wheel. I spin the dials of my radios. Spinning and listening, waiting out this world together. When I was a child, I have an old lamp radio of my grandfather. He allowed me to listen it, and it was a magic to see the glowing tubes, smell, dusty smell. And uh, I never thinking how it will be important to me in my life. And when uh, the war began, it allows me not only to have another different source of information. When you listen radio station from another country, you can imagine that you're also there, and uh, it allows you to rest a little. <laughs> oh, uh, here is fuel shortage. We have no fuel because I don't know why. You know, we all know why. <laughs> Today is 29th of April, yes, two months invasion and uh, the missiles continue to fly over the entire country. It's still war. Uh, good thing <laughs> one man asked me to fix his radio. Another radio will be fixed and uh, alive. I've been running a small uh, radio surgery here in my apartment uh, for my friends, for my neighbors, and I'm lucky to have enough spare parts for radios here, and it helps me to do repairing. One of my grandfathers also knew how to repair old receivers, so sometimes I helped him. I got to know what was inside the radio, and I like it very much. You can imagine how it felt to be a little boy putting your own hands inside the radio. <laughs> it was old uh, tube radio, high voltage. And I still have uh, little scars on my fingers. <laughs> but I wasn't afraid again and again putting my <laughs> hands inside the radio. When those old tubes warm it, Dust on them smells like good uh, whiskey, old good whiskey. I want to advise you to try it, to smell it, <laughs> if you still can find this old radio <laughs> somewhere. Rain started again. Oh, another thunderstorm. Now it sounds exactly like our air defense work uh, when they shot at missiles on the sky. It sounds exactly the same, exactly the same as thunder. The thunder still makes me nervous because now, after more than three months of war, I don't like any loud sounds and explosions. Sometimes I just can't hear difference between uh, thunder or shelling or explosions. And it is very hard to many people here 
maybe after the war we will uh, learn again to hear thunder, to hear sounds and not thinking about war. And when um, drops of rain fall on my roof, sometimes I'm afraid. Sometimes I don't understand what is it. Maybe it is shelling, maybe it is missiles, maybe it is uh, something wrong. And you don't know what to do. It is some kind of panic, I think. <laughs> but when you woke up, you understand that it's just rain. Sometimes in the empty apartment, my hamster mouse, I woke up in the middle of the night from sounds of her wheel and uh, when you sleep in your dreams, sounds of her wheel can uh, seem that it is something else. You hear maybe sounds of wheel of tanks on the streets. One time she was doing something strange with her teeth and it sounds like a ta 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 <laughs> It is another different sound and I can't recognize what is it and I um, go through apartment and looking uh, for something wrong, something strange. But when I make uh, one step, she stopped. And when I go away, she starts chewing again. <laughs> I spent maybe three hours to understand what it was. And it was her. It was mouse. My crazy tuner. This is my crazy tuner doing his job. It tunes now this ham radio frequency. So now I can transmit here. Uh, Hotel Sierra 3, November Bravo Radio. The Thailand station. He is very loud here in Kyiv. And it is my first QSO after three months of silence. <laughs> Ham radio here is uh, something like your usual cup of tea, maybe. To be on air. It is a little piece of normal life, I think. It is all about moral and your feelings, and it is very important in case of war. Yes, we still have problems, we have air raids here, but uh, when I hear the radio, I can't hear those awful alarms. Maybe it will be dangerous to miss it, but after three months of those sirens, you can hear something different. It is like a window to another world. Command bridge has blown up this morning. I don't want to celebrate it, but it is very good news for us. Maybe this is some kind of Rubicon. <laughs> Maybe war not last long now. Hello. Now it is autumn and war is not end and it is very dangerous in Kyiv, still dangerous because there are many missiles hit every day. We decided that my family will spend the winter in Poland and we hope uh, maybe even in the spring the war will end and we can live together. I'm in the dark again. I only have the radio here.
when it is blackout in Kyiv and when I looking out the window uh, I can see a black black hole, big black hole and if there is no clouds I can clearly see stars when it is too much lights in the city in the night you don't pay attention to the stars but when it is blackout <laughs> you can see stars and it is so unusual and you can see a very bright moon and sometimes you can see very little glowing red dots on the streets <laughs> when people smoke it is impossible to see it when it is bright lights on the streets but in the blackout you can pay attention to very tiny things to the tiny details and uh, it is a new universe uh, on your streets. You can hear more details. There is no noise. On the air you can hear radio clear. You can find uh, good things. You can even enjoy it. <laughs> Ульяна Сергій Сім, Іван Галина, Наталка Дріпанна. Всім прийом. Добрий вечір. Іван, добрий, шановний оператор. Now it is very cold outside. All my windows are closed, but on the air all windows are open now. Іван Галина, I heard about several Ukrainian radio amateurs who died during this war. When a radio amateur dies, we call them silent key, because when someone dies, his Morse key falls silent, but his signals continue to live. Some signals go out to space and fly forever, I think. And maybe sometime someone on another planet can hear your signal. And we believe that while our signals fly away for the million years, we still live in these signals, because it is a part of me. Like a form of eternal life, I think. 